In your opinion, what makes the sport of boxing such a good subject for films? You know, it's inherently dramatic. You know, you have to, um, you have to overcome obstacles in order to attain a goal, you know? And that is, uh, that's the lifeblood of drama. You know, that's what it's about. It's about a hero's journey, dating back to the ancient Greeks, you know, Odysseus. You know, that's, that's, that's what we, we care about, is to see uh, a man um, achieve something mm -hmm. by overcoming adversity. And, uh, and that's the very nature of the sport. So that's why I think it makes such, such great films. You know, some of my favorite films of all time are, uh, are boxing movies. What's your favorite, if you had to pick one? You know, it, it'll, be, it'll be one uh, that, uh, that'll probably surprise you. Um, I love a film by Robert Wise called The Setup. Uh, I know you remember that. The Setup? Yeah. Yep. You know? You know, an aging, you know, uh, uh, heavyweight who's uh, basically been been written off. You know, uh, uh, is thrown into a bout with a with a with a young contender, and uh, and he beats him. He was supposed to take a dive. Do you, do you know what I mean? You know, and and he didn't. And it's the consequences of what what happens to that. Really, really wonderful film. You know, so it may not, not 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 maybe one that that audiences remember because everybody knows Raging Bull and everybody knows Rocky and everybody knows Body and Soul and those movies are great and I love those movies, but uh, watch the setup okay. by, the, by Robert Wise. I know you do a lot of combat sports. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're very active physically. Yep. Mm -hmm. What was the challenge of playing a boxer, a fighter? You played Light Sleary. What was the challenge for you physically and mentally to get into that role? You know, you're always hoping as an actor to have the experience that most closely resembles the experience that you imagine the character would have had, right? So you can never have exactly the same experience, but you want to try to replicate it and get a taste of it to the greatest extent possible. So for me, when I was preparing to, to, to play a, a fighter, you know, on that television show, I, uh, I reached out to, 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 to the, the smartest guys that I knew in boxing. You know, my friend Teddy Atlas uh, very graciously agreed uh, uh, to train me, uh, you know, for a time. And then, and then I also trained uh, with uh, a guy who is still uh, a great friend of mine, uh, Mark Breland, who is, uh, uh, was an Olympic gold medalist and, and, and I think a five-time New York uh, Golden Gloves champion, a two-time world champion as a pro and often, often called the greatest amateur fighter of all time. And, uh, and then Mark told me he wanted to put me in an amateur fight, so I fought in the Masters Division of USA Boxing and I won a three-round decision against a German heavyweight. And, you know, it was all just to try to, try to understand, you know, what, what, what the experience is all about. And, uh, you know, I was lucky, you know, I, I had people that, um, you know, uh, like my friend Teddy and like Mark and other people too, that were willing to spend time with me, you know, and, and help me. I'm very honored to be chosen as a Grand Marshal. You know, I, I didn't expect it, Bobby. What happened was, um, uh, I got a call from my friend uh, Teddy Atlas and he said I'm going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame and I'm having some of my friends and family come up and be with me on that weekend. I'd like you to come up. And I said, um, I, I, sure, I'll be there. And then completely unrelated, a couple of weeks later, I got a call and they asked me if I would be Grand Marshal uh, for the Parade of Champions. And I said, well, I'm going to be there anyway, <laughs> so uh, sure, I'd love to. Um, so uh, yeah, it's been, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Talk about Teddy, the trainer that he is, the broadcaster that he's yeah. become, and why he's worthy of the Hall of Fame. Well, look, you know, uh, um, uh, you, know you, you, you don't have to hear it from me. You can ask anybody in the sport of boxing. You know, uh, T Teddy uh, is, uh, is a very special guy. I, was, I had a privilege, you know, I was a um, young actor in New York City in the early 90s. I was a big boxing fan, and I heard they were going to make a movie about, um, about Mike Tyson. And uh, I got a call from a casting director, and they had wanted me to come in and to read for the role of uh, Kevin Rooney. I don't really look like Kevin Rooney, you know, I don't really, look, 
my friend, you know, Aaron Eckhart, you know, he's not a close friend of mine, but I worked with him with Tom Hanks on a Clint Eastwood movie called Sully. But Aaron Eckhart played uh, you, uh, uh, Kevin Rooney. And, you know, so, you know, and, 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 you know, Aaron looks more like me than he does look like Kevin. So maybe maybe I could have done it, but I didn't, I wanted to play Teddy Atlas. And I said, I, I knew who he was. I had followed his career and I was very intrigued by him and by his approach to training. And so I, I had my agent call the casting director and said, listen, would you consider allowing Holt to audition for the role of Teddy Atlas and and they said to me well Teddy Atlas is only one scene in the movie and I said I don't mind so I'll play Teddy in one scene so I got the part but then what happened was um, the director I'm trying to remember his name now a German director who made a, a very good movie called Last Exit to Brooklyn oh, yeah. Uli Adel right you know once he started doing more research about Mike Tyson and about the early part of Mike Tyson's development as a fighter in Catskill, New York, what he came to understand was that Teddy had a much more important role than he had originally understood. That, you know, that Cuss, let's, let's be honest, you know, you know, genius though he was, you know, Cuss was already an, an, an old man by the time Cuss, uh, by, the, by the time Mike Tyson arrives in Catskill. He's not training, he's not training Mike Tyson in the gym every day, do you know what I mean? He's coming to the gym well, once every couple of weeks to watch a sparring session or to, you, to, you know what I mean? Training t t a Tyson in the gym every single day is Teddy Atlas. Taking Mike Tyson to the Junior Olympics is Teddy Atlas. Developing Mike Tyson as an amateur fighter that's Teddy Atlas. So all of a sudden, my 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 role started to expand, you know, and uh, up to and including, you know, the big, you know, you know, the the you know the the, the blowout, you know, the scene where, you know, uh, you know, people have been talking about it, writing about it for years, where Teddy put a gun to uh, to Mike Tyson's head, and suddenly that scene's in the movie and and stuff like that. And so, you know, um, when I got the part. You know, I, uh, I, 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 I reached out to Teddy, you know, I got his phone number and, and I, I called him up and I just said, you know, Mr. Atlas, uh, uh, you don't know me, but uh, I'm an actor. My name is Holt McCallany. I'm going to play you in a movie for HBO. And uh, I would be grateful if you would uh, let me come to the gym and watch you train your fighters. At, the, at that time, he had Michael Moore who uh, the very next year became uh, heavyweight champion of the world, and he also had Shannon Briggs, mm -hmm. okay, right? right? Yeah, and they, they were they were training uh, in, a, in a gym in New Jersey called the House of Pain, yeah, right? And um, and so uh, Teddy invited me uh, to the gym, you know, and I got to and I got to watch, and then he invited me to his house, and he introduced me to his family. You always hope in a situation like that that the, that the person that you're going to play is going to be open, yeah. and is going to welcome you and try to help you understand as much as you can about who they are and about what 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 makes them unique and uh, and that's what Teddy did he really helped me to to, to 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 really understand everything that had happened in Catskill New York the dynamic which was very interesting between him and Tyson between him and Customato between Tyson and D'Amato what happened as a result of that Bobby was a 25-year friendship mm -hmm. came out of it and we're still we're still close friends, and he even said some very kind words about me today, which I had not expected. And uh, so, you know, um, like I said, you know, I was going to come here and be here to support him, even if I wasn't Grand Marshal at the parade. So the fact that they asked me to do that, it's just kind of like, um, you know, the icing on the cake. Just talk about Mark and, and right. what you know about you know, the, where he came from and, right. who, and, who, he, and who he is and who he right. becomes. Right, right. So, so, you know, uh, I, I knew Mark Breland first just as a fan. You know, I just liked Mark's style. You know, he was a really interesting fighter. He was tall and slender with long arms. He really fascinated me playing that outside game and, and he and he was and he was really compelling to watch. And I had heard that he trained guys at Gleason's gym in Brooklyn. So I uh, uh, I was working on the television show and you know and 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 the thing was Teddy was often traveling do you know what I mean yeah, to do yeah, ESPN yeah, he's yeah. doing Friday night fights he's on the road a lot so we were working in the gym sometimes like once a week or something but I wanted to be in the gym every single day and so I went into uh, Gleason's gym I met Mark 
And I said, look, Mark, you know, I'm an actor. Um, I'm going to play a boxer on TV. Would you, would you consider um, being my trainer? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, started, I started working with him. What I came to understand is that he's not just a great, uh, he wasn't just a great fighter, great amateur fighter, great, great, great champion, but he's also a great trainer. Look, he's got Deontay Wilder now. It's an awfully big step up in class to go from training me to training the heavyweight champion of the world, you know. Uh, but obviously, they've had uh, a, a tremendous amount of success. And Mark has a great boxing mind. You know, he's a, um, um, you know, uh, he's an unassuming guy. He's a humble guy. He's a soft-spoken guy, but he's uh, he's a very you know um, he's a very kind and decent and ethical you know uh, uh, a man that I just have tremendous respect for, and and he helped me a lot. And I'll tell you, when he was in my corner the night I had my first amateur fight, it was an honor for me. Do you know what I mean? To have uh, to have a great champion like that, you know, be my trainer. I've been following your father on Instagram. That's you know, I love fun, those right? old photos that yeah. he posts. They're so great, great. Yeah. yeah. Introduces him to a whole new set of fans and it just reminds people of his career yeah. and you know, the That's things awesome. he accomplished yeah. and it's like it's a trip down memory lane yeah. and it's it's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah.